Good morning everyone. So today I'd like to show you how you can uh, domain join your uh, Linux machine to a Azure AD solution. So when you migrate your machine to the cloud, you would expect from your cloud provider to have a solution for identity access management. And one of the things on how to do that is joining your uh, Linux VM to an Azure AD uh, directory or tenant. So here I will show you how to create uh, your new directory. Azure AD Active Directory. I'm doing that through the new portal. Just creating it here. And what this will do, this will create, uh, let's see, Netherlands, or let's say, yeah, Netherlands. Chris Azure AD Demo. Let's see if this is available. It's not. Mm, Chris AD demo. Let's see if this one is available. So what this will do, this will create a new directory within Azure Active Directory. And it will be available as a new security realm you can use to store your users or manage your users on. So this will usually take a minute or so. Let me pause it. So it has created the directory. Let me refresh the browser. Cool, the new logo. <laughs> and here you will see that I have the ability to switch to a new tenant or directory and this is the one I just created. The next thing I need to do now is link this new directory to a subscription. As you might know uh, you can link one directory or tenant to multiple subscriptions but uh, you can only link one subscription to one tenant or directory. Um, the subscription is really necessary because uh, eventually, of course, you have to uh, pay for it. And it's, uh, it's a pay-as-you-go model, as you might know. And all the resources you are cr uh, creating uh, need to be linked to a subscription. So in order to do that, let's go to the, this portal, account.azure.com. This is the account portal, and here you can create your subscriptions. Let's just create one. Obviously, the next step will be linking the subscription to your tenant or directory. Oh. Click the wrong button. Apologies for that. <clears throat> Here I see the link uh, add subscription or in Dutch abonnement toevoegen. And here I will select one of the options I have. Uh, so uh, for everyone, this will be different. Uh, some guys of you only have a credit card. Obviously, as a Microsoft, you have more options like that. Um, I'm going to skip this part, but uh, at the end, you will see something like this. So uh, in the in the previous screen, you you select what payment option you want to have, your personal details, and here you would uh, have a new subscription. And I'm selecting this subscription because I want to change the name. Abonnement gegevens bewerken. So it's subscription change the subscription. I'm changing the name to Azure AD. Uh, demo. So the last step, what we need to do uh, in order uh, for preparation is link this subscription to the newly created directory. And uh, as you might know, there is a classic portal and a new portal. 
currently I'm not able to link these two within the new portal or I don't know how to so I'm doing it through the way I know it and that's in the classic portal within the classic portal I'm going to my default uh, folder and here I will select uh, the subscription Azure AD demo that's the one we just created Here we go. Then on the left screen, I'm going to the settings. I'm selecting this subscription and I'm selecting edit directory. Here it will load the direct available directories and here you see the newly created Chris AD demo directory or tenant. Selecting it, nothing will happen on administrator level. So now I have linked this uh, subscription to the directory. Going to the new portal again, I'm going to refresh my screen and I'm going to, I already selected it. Now I should be able to create resources. <coughs> Let's just uh, create a resource group, Azure AD demo, it's on this subscription and I As you might have noticed, it didn't uh, work directly. I had to log in and log out uh, after uh, linking the directory to the tenant. So, but uh, let's continue. Azure AD demo. Let's select West Europe. It's there. Refresh. Within the resource group, I'm now going to, to create uh, the glue or more, more or less the, the NTLM or Kerberos layer between Azure AD and um, the virtual machines I will create later on. So I will select Azure uh, Active Directory Services. <clears throat> and there's the one, Azure AD Domain Services. I'm creating it. And this will usually take, um, I'm just uh, selecting this domain. This will usually take uh, uh, quite a while to create. Uh, count on, let's say 10, 15 minutes maybe. Uh, so be patient. Uh, I will pause the movie for now and I will continue when we're done. Oh. Let me finish the visit, visit first. Apologies for that. So I'm creating a new new virtual network, Azure AD demo, leaving everything by default, doing nothing with the subnet. I'm just adding a user now, a member. This is important because this will be the user I will use for initializing Kerberos. So I'm using one user that's already there. It's mine. I can also invite users from other domains. Uh, and let's just add another one. Mm. Everything within this group is also fine by me. Select. Okay. Let's close this. And I'm selecting okay. Okay. So I'm pausing now and I will continue when once this has been created. So the deployment has succeeded. Let's go to the resource. And here you see I've created 
the Azure AD domain service with this tenant. Uh, what's important to know, oh, it's still being provisioned. Let me refresh it. Mm -hmm. I still have to wait uh, a while. Like I said, this, this is by far the longest step to take. Service has been provisioned. You will see these things. And one of the most important steps in our uh, configuration is the IP addresses of the DNS. You need to copy these. So you see it's 10.0.0.4 and 10.0.0.5. And we will add those DNS addresses to the VNet. Within this VNet we will create the machines. So here we see the virtual network, Azure AD demo, and here we will configure custom DNS addresses. So we saw the 4 and we saw a 5. We will save this. So what we will do now is we will create a virtual machine, a RHEL 7.4 virtual machine. Of course, these steps can be automated as well, but for this demo purpose, I will just do it using the portal. So, creating a machine here, RHEL 7.4, just following the wizard. When you create this machine, just make sure it's part of the VNet you just created, I'm giving it the name RHEL 2. Chris, uh, for now I'm not using a public key, I'm using just a password. Existing. So, here we go. Default. Not doing anything here, just making sure I'm using the same network. I am. No monitoring. Select OK. Purchase, Opslam. Okay. Uh, while it's creating, uh, I've created here some users. So within the directory, I have all users and groups. As you can see, I've created a user Chris, which is part of the uh, AAD uh, administrators group. So when I look at groups, you see the user Chris is AAD DC administrators. I will use this user also to initialize Kerberos later on. And I've used uh, or I created a user. Which is not part of anything. So a normal uh, user. One thing you need to know is when you create a user in users and groups, of course you can sync this with your uh, on-prem uh, Active Directory with AD Sync. But if you create a new user, you will get a temporary password. And this temporary password, you can send a mail to the user or uh, with a link so that he knows he has to uh, reset the password and resetting the password is when I'm opening a new incognito version you can go to apps.office.com uh, oh. apps.office.com and when you sign in with the user make sure you're using the username with the complete domain name. So it will be like uh, Hank at and then the completely fully qualified domain name. Com. And then you will be able to reset your password into the password you actually like to use. Okay, let's see how we are with creating the machine because of course we want to test if our federated authentication with the domain joint machine works, right? RHEL2 
we've got a public IP address. So let me SSH into this machine. It's not there yet. Let's pause for a while. So I just saw that the machine came up. Uh, I can log into the machine. Now we need to do some preparations. The first thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to ch change the Etsy, Etsy host file. What I will do is, oh, come on, I'm changing the name, the host name here, and I'm making it part of the domain. So, Chris A, a D, demo dot com. So then I need to install some software. So it's Kerberos related. Let me not bore you with that. Installed everything I needed. And now I'm going to discover the realm. Make sure you're using capital letters here. So you see it has discovered it, uh, but it has not been configured yet. Then we will initialize with the user, which is part of the AAD administrators. I need to uh, authenticate, of course, with the password. I've reset, so it's done. And now we will join. Let's have a look at this demo. Make the screen a bit bigger. So we will join with this domain and we will use this user to do that. Let's see, uh, I think I'm missing a space here. Yes, I need to authenticate again. Here you see I need to install some missing packages so I just do yum install up yes do it Let's try joining again. Yes, you see that it's referring to the DNS service we configured earlier. And it discovered this domain service and now I need to authenticate again. And done. Now let's test if we can log in with the non-administrator user. So you see here, this was the command we used to log into this machine. Now we will use user Hank at my domain and my domain is chrisaaddemo.onmicrosoft.com see and I'm in so cool stuff very useful for uh, enterprises uh, hope you guys liked it and enjoy your day